Hey, it is the late, 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 late night hour. I think right before midnight of Good Friday. I hope you had a wonderful day. And yeah, this is a time of reflection. And we're continuing the life and teachings of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. This story talks about Jesus talking about his death again. There were some Greeks there too. And we know that Jesus died on Good Friday, and he's speaking of his death here. He's still alive. There were some Greeks there, too. These were some of the people who went to Jerusalem to worship at the Passover festival. They went to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee. They said, Sir, we want to meet Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus said to them, The time has come for the Son of Man to receive his glory. It is a fact that a grain of wheat must fall to the ground and die before it can grow and produce much more wheat. If it never dies, it will never be more than a single seed. Whoever loves the life they have now will lose it, but whoever is willing to give up their life in this world will keep it. They will have eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. My servants must be with me everywhere I am. My father will give honor to anyone who serves me. Now I am very troubled. What should I say? Should I say, Father, save me from this time of suffering? No, I came to this time so that I could suffer. Father, do what will bring you glory. Then a voice came from heaven. I have already brought glory to myself. I will do it again. The people standing there heard the voice. They said it was thunder, but others said an angel spoke to him. Jesus said that voice was for you and not for me. Now is the time for the world to be judged. Now the ruler of this world will be thrown out. I will be lifted up from the earth. When that happens, I will draw all people to myself. Jesus said this to show how he would die. The people said, but our law says that the Messiah will live forever. So why do you say the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is the Son of Man? Then Jesus said, the light will be with you for only a short time more. So walk while you have the light. Then the darkness will not catch you. People who walk in the darkness don't know where they are going. So put your trust in the light while you still have it. Then you will be children of light. When Jesus finished saying these things, he went away to a place where the people could not find him. The people saw all these miraculous signs Jesus did, but they still did not believe in him. This was to give full meaning to what Isaiah the prophet said. Lord, who believed what we told them? Who has seen the Lord's power? This is why the people could not believe. Believe Isaiah also, because Isaiah also said, God made the people blind. He closed their minds. He did this so that they would not see with their eyes and understand with their minds. He did it so that they would not turn and be healed. Isaiah said this because he saw Jesus' divine greatness, so he spoke about him. But many people believed in Jesus. Even many of the Jewish leaders believed in him, but they were afraid of the Pharisees, so they did not say openly that they believed. They were afraid that they would be ordered to stay out of the synagogue. They loved praise from people more than praise from God. Then Jesus said loudly, everyone who believes in me is really believing in the one who sent me. Everyone who sees me is really seeing the one who sent me. I came into this world as a light. I came so, I'm sorry. I came so that everyone who believes in me will not stay in darkness. I did not come into the world to judge people. I came to save the people in the world. That was his purpose. All of us have a purpose. And we get clarity by spending time with our Father. I came again so that everyone who believes in me will not stay in darkness. I did not come into the world to judge people. I came to save the people in the world. So I am not the one who judges those who hear my teaching and do not obey. But there is a judge for all those who refuse to believe in me and do not accept what I say. The message I have spoken will judge them on the last day. That is because what I taught was not from myself. The father who sent me told me what to say and what to teach. And I know that whatever he says to do will bring eternal life. 
So the things I say are exactly what the Father told me to say. Mary anoints Jesus at Bethany. It was now only two days before the Passover and the Festival of Unleavened Bread. The leading priests and teachers of the law were trying to find a way to arrest Jesus without the people seeing it. Then they could kill him. They said, but we cannot arrest Jesus during the festival. We don't want the people to be angry and cause a riot. Jesus was in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper. There they had a dinner for Jesus. Martha served the food and Lazarus was one of the people eating with Jesus. Mary brought in a pint of expensive perfume made of pure nard. She poured the perfume on Jesus' feet. Then she wiped his feet with her hair and the sweet smell from the perfume filled the whole house. Judas Iscariot, one of Jesus' followers was there, the one who would later hand Jesus over to his enemies. Judas said that perfume was worth a full year's pay. It should have been sold and the money should have been given to the poor people. But Judas did not really care about the poor. He said this because he was a thief. He was the one who kept the money bag for the group of followers. And he often stole money from the bag. Jesus answered, don't stop her. It was right for her to save this perfume for today. The day for me to be prepared for burial. You will always have those who are poor with you. But you will not always have me. This woman did the only thing she could do for me. She poured perfume on my body before I did to prepare it for burial. The good news will be told to people all over the world. And I can assure you that everywhere the good news is told, the story of what this woman did will also be told. And people will, will remember her. Judas agrees to help Jesus' enemies. One of Jesus' 12 apostles was named Judas Iscariot. Satan entered him, and he went and talked with the leader, leading priests and some of the soldiers who guarded the temple. He talked to them about a way to hand Jesus over to them. He said, I will hand Jesus over to you. What will you pay for me doing this? The priest gave him 30 silver coins. After that, Judas waited for the best time to hand Jesus over to them. Preparations for Passover meal. The day of unleavened bread came. This was the day when the Jews always killed the lambs for the Passover. Jesus said to Peter and John, go and prepare the Passover meal for us to eat. They said to him, where do you want us to prepare the meal? He said to them, when you go into the city, you will see a man carrying a jar of water. Follow him. He will go into a house. Tell the owner of the house. The teacher asks that you please show us the room where he and his followers can eat the Passover meal. Then the owner will show you a large room upstairs that is ready for us. Prepare the meal there. So Jesus and so Peter and John left. Everything happened the way Jesus said. So they prepared the Passover meal. The time came for them to eat the Passover meal. Jesus and the apostles were together at the table. Jesus last supper with his followers. Jesus said to them, I wanted very much to eat this Passover meal with you before I die. I will never eat another Passover meal until it is given its full meaning in God's kingdom. Then Jesus took a cup of wine. He gave thanks to God for it and said, take this cup and give it to everyone here. I will never drink wine again until God's kingdom come. And, you know, this happened on Monday, Thursday. Jesus washes his followers' feet. The devil had already persuaded Judas Iscariot to hand Jesus over to his enemies. Judas was the son of Simon. The father had given Jesus power over everything. Jesus knew this. He also knew that he had come from God and he knew that he was going back to God. So while they were eating, Jesus stood up and took off his robe. He took, he got a towel and wrapped it around his waist. Then he poured water into a bowl and began to wash the followers' feet. He dried their feet with the towel that was wrapped around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, but Peter said to him, Lord, you should not wash my feet. Jesus answered, you don't know what I am doing now, but later you will understand. Peter said, no, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, if I don't wash your feet, you are not one of my people. Simon Peter said, Lord, after you wash my feet, wash my hands and my head too. Jesus said, after a person has a bath, his whole body is clean. He needs only to wash his feet and you are clean, but not all of you. Jesus knew who would hand him over to his enemies. That is why he said, not all of you are clean. When Jesus finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and went back to the table. He asked, do you understand what I did for you? You call me teacher and you call me Lord. And this is right because this is what I am. 
I am your Lord and teacher, but I washed your feet. So you also should wash each other's feet. I did this as an example for you. So you should serve each other just as I serve you. Believe me, servants are not greater than their master. Those sent to do something are not greater than the ones who sent them. If you know these things, great blessings will be yours if you do them. Father God, you are sending each one of us in a specific assignment. Father Lord, let us trust you with all of our heart and not lean to our own understanding, but in all our ways, in all of our decisions, in all of the corners that we have to turn, wherever. Let us acknowledge you and ask you, and you promise to direct our paths. We give you the honor and glory and the praise in Jesus' name, amen.